I'm Mark Martin, former Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of North Carolina and founding dean and professor at High Point University Law School. And it's my honor and pleasure this afternoon to have the former Chief Judge of the NC Office of Administrative Hearings with me. And I might as well go ahead and say at the outset that the long standing Chief Judge of the Office of Administrative Hearings. Chief Judge Mann, what a pleasure to have you here today to uh, talk a little bit about the law, a little bit about our profession. Welcome. Thank you, Dean. I'm delighted and honored to be here. So let's start with something very basic. Uh, why did you decide to go to law school? Well, my dad told me early on, having grown up in the Depression, that if things turned bad, you always had a job. <laughs> but I found it was much more than that. It taught me many things along the way, but it taught me critical thinking. And that is something that seems to be in short supply these days. Without that law school critical analysis, I just don't think that I would be able to be the problem solver that all lawyers are called upon to be. Let's, uh, let's go back to uh, your elevation to the important office, really the top administrative law judge in the state. Uh, we call it uh, chief judge of the Office of Administrative Hearings. So you were in that role for a long time. Uh, how long was it? Well, it was just shy of 32 years. I started uh, a little late in my first year, uh, about three months uh, into uh, that term uh, that I missed, which made me a little short of the 32 years, but it was eight four-year terms. Eight four-year terms. And this office is an appointment of the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of North Carolina. And I know how honored I was to have the opportunity to reappoint you to that important office, but I was only one of a number of chief justices who appointed you in that office. And I think something that speaks volumes about your character and your integrity and your ability is that you were reappointed by chief justices of both political parties. That, that's correct. And let me say, Chief Justice uh, Martin, if you were honored to appoint me, I was more honored to receive that appointment from you. But it started, uh, in 1989 with Chief Justice Jim Exum for two terms, uh, then Chief Justice Mitchell for one, uh, Chief Justice I. Beverly Lake Jr. for two terms, um, and then Chief Justice Sarah Parker for two terms. And uh, you had only one opportunity before you went on to higher academic work. Well, what an honor that I was the uh, final person in that sequence to be able to uh, reappoint you. Well, you've done so much uh, good in that role, and um, what an amazing honor to be the top administrative law judge for 32 years, but as if that wasn't enough. As I understand it, you've also ventured into the field of legal authors, and uh, lest I spoil the suspense, tell us about the name of your book. The name of my book is Madam Vice President. Uh, uh, it's all written to drive the reader uh, from a fictional encounter to the last several pages. And I don't think the authors really are supposed to tell you that, but uh, I want to get to the conclusions and my concerns uh, in writing fiction about the 25th Amendment. Uh, I could have selected a law review article to speak about this, but then I decided I, I wanted to read, to try to reach a different readership. Uh, and so it's this uh, wild tale about uh, this character that eventually becomes the Vice President of the United States and an acting president under the 25th Amendment. So it was fun. It wasn't easy, but uh, it's part of the craft of being a lawyer and a judge. We come at it naturally uh, over time. And so uh, writing for judges and lawyers really is second nature. 
And it, although it took 10 years, uh, a little, uh, in the words of the Shawshank Redemption, uh, uh, pressure and time will eventually produce the, the result. <clears throat> but it was a, a very interesting endeavor and I enjoyed it and the, it's been well reviewed. Well, I want to thank you for your lifetime of service and also thank you for taking time this afternoon to talk to me. Thank, thank you very you, much. Chief, thank you for your service.